The mic is on. Fix the sound problem. <clears throat> Fix the sound problem. You got it now? Uh, so that is okay. Uh, we've had at least 14. Okay, over here. At least 14 days of perfection. And uh, so I'm not shocked at what the devil has done this morning and what he is doing and uh, in trying to hinder us to get the gospel out. Uh, this is the devil, and this is one of the things I preach hard to our people here. Don't let the devil use you. Don't drop your guard. Be sober-minded, vigilant, and watchful. And the truth of the matter is, the devil did what he normally did does we're not ignorant of his devices and he took advantage and this ha happens all the time in ministries and churches and in uh, <clears throat> oftentimes especially in churches where the pastor is very loving and very uh, uh, forgiving and letting people just kind of do what they want it's the constant problems constant problem they should be loving they should be forgiving uh, but you have to be firm about this this is a military situation and the devil will take advantage of being slack not being prayerful not being sober-minded not being vigilant and uh, watchful uh, I know people who get frustrated uh, who are working in a ministry in another place and they constantly get frustrated because there's always some satanic confusion going on things never go smoothly as i said and as i've told the people here for the past two weeks for sure maybe over a month we have experienced some of the most powerful most wonderful most beautiful uh, services standing between the living and the dead service services uh, rescue the perishing care for the dying services and you know that you people know that God has come down upon us and when he does that that's a beautiful thing and you can't shake him and you can't uh uh, stop him. And that's one of the things I I uh, pr appreciate about the Lord. He is just as he is unrelenting, and if you're willing to be unrelenting, unrelenting with him, uh, he'll take you with him. And so, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, family, friends, and foes and even foes in the family. Somebody's already on there. And to the standing between the living and the dead service family members you two switch temporarily so he can take care of that and then you can switch back afterwards ladies and gentlemen brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus <laughs> This is Daniel White the third president of Gospel Light Society International with the Scripture and the Sense podcast episode number 90
uh, episode, pardon me, number 901, where I simply read the Holy Bible, the Word of God, and give the sense of it based on an authoritative uh, commentary source, men that we believe who were used by God by the power of the Holy Ghost, men we believe who prayed and uh, who were born again and saved. Uh, I don't know if Dr. Walvert is still living, but I believe that Dr. Zook is still living, for sure. And, uh, and of course, Dr. Matthew Henry is in heaven. And, uh, and we lean on the power of the Holy Spirit first and foremost. But we believe that these men were used by God as well. And today we uh, use uh, multiple sources such as the Bible Knowledge Commentary or the Matthew Henry Commentary uh, combined together along with uh, study Bibles and other reputable commentaries to help give you a better understanding of the Word of God straight from the horse's mouth, if you will. Beloved, this podcast is based upon Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 8, where it says, Ezra and the Levites read in the book and the law of God distinctly and gave the sense and caused them to understand the reading. The aim of this podcast is that through the simple reading of the word of God, the Holy Bible and the giving of the sense of it, the church would be revived and the world would be awakened. Today, beloved, we are reading Zechariah chapter 12, verses 1 through 3. Shall we pray? Holy Father God, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the King of kings and Lord of lords. And uh, Holy Father God, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. And Lord, we thank you for uh, the fact that the power is in you and that uh, you, you give us uh, some of that power through prayer for you have invited us boldly to the throne of grace as by your grace I'll be preaching on more today uh, and Holy Father God I praise you and I thank you for your love your mercy your kindness your loving kindness your long-suffering and your grace that you've shown all of us. And I also thank you for your rebuke and your chastening hand upon us. Lord, as you know, I would not be here having served you for 41 years if you had not saved me and chastised me and rebuked me. And uh, uh, for I, have, I would have never learned the importance of fearing you respecting you and obeying you so thank you for doing that to all of us and if people are not being dealt with that way according to your holy scriptures they're bastards they don't know you uh, they're not sons and daughters that belong to you they are children of the devil and uh, lord we pray for their salvation that your holy ghost your love your mercy and your grace will not give them rest. I don't know how you do it. I'm not going to pretend how you draw people to yourself and how you help them to understand the gospel at that moment of faith. I don't, I can't explain all of that. All I know is you told me to preach your holy gospel, uh, to go into all the world and preach the gospel, the great commission. That's all I 
know how to do. That's all I can do. And Lord, I marvel at the people who write in and say they got saved or they came back to you. I have nothing to do with it. And I know it. Because it is not by might, Lord, according to your word. Not by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. If you don't move, Lord, and help us to understand your holy word and help us to understand the gospel, nothing good is going to come of this. And Lord, I know that you're moving because you're not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And so, Holy Father God, we pray that you'll save the lost and revive the saved. Glorify your holy name. Lift up your holy son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, help our technician to rise to the occasion and solve the technical problems that we're having on this Wednesday. And we're not shocked because we're not ignorant of the devil's devices. And Lord, I thank you for the perfect days, over a month of perfect days. In fact, Lord, this has been the best October ever as far as I am concerned. I, 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 I have told the people here, I just don't, I cannot remember having such great services. I don't know uh, what you're doing and how you're doing it. Uh, but these have been some powerful, blessed services that you have wrought. And I give you the glory, praise, and honor. Save that soul that's near as hell. Reclaim the backslidden. And glorify your holy name. Lift up your holy son, the Lord Jesus Christ. For it is in his holy name I pray. We pray. Amen. Zechariah chapter 12 verses 1 through 3. The Bible reads, The burden of the word of the Lord for Israel, saith the Lord, which stretcheth forth the heavens, and layeth the foundation of the earth, and formeth the spirit of man within him. Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of trembling unto all the people round about, when they shall be in the siege both against Judah and against Jerusalem. And in that day will I make Jerusalem a burdensome, a burdensome stone for all people. All that burden themselves with it shall be cut in pieces, though all the people of the earth be gathered together against it. Now, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, family, friends, and foes, and even foes in the family, and the standing between the living and the dead service family members. We just read in your hearing, I just read in your hearing, Zechariah chapter 12, verses 1 through 3. Now, here is the sense of it from the powerful Matthew Henry commentary who knew even back then he's dead and in heaven now that uh, no, no it didn't matter where you are in the scriptures we always ought to make a beeline to Jesus Christ and so Dr. Matthew Henry says here regarding this passage here is a divine prediction which will be a heavy burden to all the enemies of the church of God. This is how Matthew Henry thought about it. But it is for Israel, for their comfort and benefit. It is promised that God will make foolish the counsels, counsels and weaken the courage of the enemies of the church. The exact meaning is not clear, but God often begins by calling the poor and despised. And in that day, even the feeblest will resemble David and be 
as imminent in courage. And everything good, desirable indeed, is it that the examples and labors of Christians should render them as fire among wood, as a torch in a sheaf to kindle the flame of divine love, to spread religion on the right hand and on the left. One of the things that we do with this podcast is that um, we use both the ancient one of the best ancient commentary and we use the best modern commentary so you're getting a full spectrum of understanding regarding this passage from the best scholars the most gifted scholars it's not only it's not only about your education where you went to school you have to be gifted from god before you even go to college you got to be called by god or to seminary uh, uh, those are the ones who make the best preachers and teachers and pastors and prophets and evangelists. And so, dear friend, today, if you want to, to know the Bible better, if you want to um, have your sins forgiven, and you want to not have to walk around feeling guilty all of the time if you want to go to heaven when you die and not go to hell then you need to be saved you need to be born again you need to be washed in the blood of the lamb you need to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me help you to understand why. First, accept the fact that you are a sinner and that you have broken God's laws. You have broken the Ten Commandments of God. The Bible says in Romans 3.23, For all have sinned, and come short of the glory of God. You need to acknowledge with me that I am a sinner. The Pope is a sinner. The president of all the presidents of all denominations are sinners. Even Joel Osteen is a sinner. We all have sinned against God, haven't we? You say, well, not me. I, I'm, I've been a pretty good fellow. You know, I, I do the right thing. And so I believe that my good works would outweigh my bad, will they? But well, see, in God's kingdom, he does not operate that way. One sin can get you into hell. One sin will put you in hell if it's not forgiven through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, by the grace of God. You must understand it's all about God's grace. Have you ever told a lie before? Have you ever uh, stolen anything before? I don't care if it's uh, even when you were a child. Do you remember stealing things when you were a child? I do. I remember stealing a red Bible of all things. I didn't know inside it said thou shalt not steal. While I was in elementary school, I, they gave me a Bible. They gave me a beautiful red Bible. I, I guess I loved the red Bible so much that I, I, I stole another one out of the box. Even when I got older, I can't say too much about this because they may, they might be still looking for me. Me and my boys, my gang, we didn't have money to buy beer. 
and so we, uh, nor were we of age, so we robbed a store one night. And I was in, and I was the driver of my mother's Granada. And you must understand the Granada was the black man's Mercedes back in those days. And, uh, and so I had never been a getaway guy before. And so instead of, of uh, backing up and pulling out once we stole the beer, which, which could have put us in jail and should have put us in jail. I, I, I put it in drive and ran into the uh, pole holding up the building. So I've stolen things before, but the Bible tells us thou shalt not steal. We ought not to steal. You should not steal. I should not steal. Even from even a wife from her husband. There's no reason to steal. A child from the parents. Jesus dealt with this. You can't you can't steal from your parents. Well, that's my mom and my dad. Uh, that's my husband. Uh, no. And you stealing stuff. Robbing your own husband. Robbing your own uh, parents. You will go to hell for that if you don't repent and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Have you ever done anything like that? Sure you have. Have you ever lusted after somebody? Have you ever coveted after somebody? Lusted after somebody or lusted after something and you became envious of it? And see, lust leads to a whole lot of other sins. That's why God does not want you to do so. It leads to a whole lot of, of other sins, adultery, fornication. It's a doorway sin, gateway sin to a whole lot of other sins, lying, robbing, dishonesty, being envious, being jealous, and all of that foolishness. Have you ever committed those sins before? Have you ever dishonored and disobeyed and disrespected your parents? At any time in your life, sure you have. That's the fourth commandment you've broken. I'm just, I'm just going right down the Ten Commandments. Have you ever dishonored God and disrespected God by dishonoring his name and taking his name in vain? You know you're lying and you say God is my witness and you know you're lying that God never witnessed anything. That's a lie. You're messing with God, man. You're going to hell for that. If you don't believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and repent of your sins. Living a lie. You're living a lie. You're a walking lying machine. You lie so much you believe it yourself. You, and the Bible says all liars shall have their part in the lake of fire. You want to see the lake of fire or something close to it? Look at the volcano that's erupting over there somewhere. That's a rivers and oceans and lakes of fire. And you will be in that forever and ever because of your sins against God. Now, I just named five of the Ten Commandments. Will you admit now? Will you join me in saying that I am a sinner? And I need God's mercy. I need God's grace. I need God's help. Secondly, dear friend, accept the fact that there is a penalty for sin. There is a punishment for sin. Always. Sin is bad. Sin gets rather, sin gets treated badly because sin is bad. Uh, everywhere. Even the, even the worst sinners, the worst people, hate the sin of others when it's committed against them. And so sin must be punished. That's why we have court cases. That's why we have judges. Sin must be punished. I was glad to hear a young man dressed in a skirt raped a girl in the bath girl's bathroom. That the, the judge was quick in punishing him. A 
And that's good. The Bible states in Romans 6, 23, for the wages of sin is death. We die because of sin. And death is a, a very serious punishment. Do not try to poo-poo on death. Death is not sweet. Death is not wonderful. Death is a part, death, death is not a part of life. No, not, <laughs> I don't know where we get these stupid statements from. That's stupid. Death is not a part of life. Death is death. It's the cessation of life. And it's not, there's nothing pretty about it, nothing fun about it, nothing to rejoice over about it. If you are saved and born again, people know where you are. And they, were, and they are comforted in knowing that they will see you again. And you can rejoice in that because of what Jesus Christ did on the cross for our sins. But death is not fun even for the Christian. It's not sweet. It's not great. It's terrible. And don't you forget that. The body goes to a grave. Your soul will go to hell if you don't believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and repent of your sins. That's a fact. That I, I'm talking about facts. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm talking about biblical facts. What Jesus Christ, everything Jesus Christ said is a fact. You're going to hell if you don't believe in him and follow him. So that leads me to my third point, except the fact, dear friend, that you are on the road to hell right now. Jesus Christ said in Matthew 18, 8, in a sermon that he preached on hell, he preached many sermons on hell. He preached more on hell than he did about heaven. So to that crowd who says, you can win more people by using sugar and honey and syrup you can catch more flies with honey being sweet first of all we're not trying to catch flies we are fishing for the souls of men and women jesus didn't obviously did, did not buy into that philosophy otherwise he would have preached on heaven all the time he preached on hell more than he did about heaven he preached on hell more than most of the prophets, all of the prophets and all of the apostles and all of the writers in the Bible. And sad to say, he preached more on hell than most preachers living today. And that's a fact. He said in Matthew 18, 8, in this horrifying sermon, Wherefore, if thy hand or thy foot offend thee, cut them off. Jesus said and Jesus it was contrary to what we have going on in the church today inviting comedians to the church that's not, you don't see that anywhere in the Bible only in our modern Christianity where we got to have a comedian and a comedian is 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 held up in high esteem in the church he's brought in and paid thousands of dollars to make you laugh when you should be crying but anyway Jesus Christ was not a comedian Jesus Christ did not just say things and did not mean them. Contrary to of the uh, image that you may have in your mind of him. Yes, he is loving, the most loving man who ever lived. Yes, he did heal the sick. Yes, he did raise the dead. Yes, he did feed the hungry. But he also was a hellfire and brimstone preacher he came to choose to die for you and for me for our sins so that we would not go to hell that's why he preached on hell a whole lot here's why i am dying for your sins to save you from hell so you need to believe in me you need to take advantage of the gospel Cut them off, cut your hand off, cut your foot off. If it's keeping you 
from believing in me and turning away from your sin. If your foot is taking you to the club to whore around and to be a whoremonger and a whore looking for free sex, feel with guilt. If your hand is putting, uh, your hand is leading you to grab somebody's uh, buttocks that don't belong to you, you're not married to them. Then cut your hands off, is what Jesus is saying. You'll be better off uh, believing in me and trusting in me and repenting of that foolishness and sin and go to heaven with a hand cut off and a foot cut off and cast them from thee, he said. It is better for thee to enter into life halt or maimed rather than having two hands or two feet to be cast into everlasting fire. Now those are the words of the hellfire. Ah, uh, ah, uh, right here, right here. Put that down. The hellfire and brimstone preacher. The greatest of all time, by the way. He taught us how to preach it. We just refuse to preach it because we're more concerned about money and butts in the seats. We're more concerned about a crowd than we are trying to save their souls and tell, by telling them the truth. That when you die, you're going to hell if you don't believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and repent of your sins. And so, ladies and gentlemen, hell is bad news. Hell is sad news. But I do have some glad news for you and some good news for you. And Jesus Christ, who preached it first and best, he preached the gospel, the good news, first and best. When he said the most magnificent words, the most wonderful words, the most loving words, yea, the most important words ever said, in the history of the world to mankind. Shakespeare didn't say it. Milton didn't say it. Maya Angelou didn't say it. Jesus said it. They quoted him. By the way, the greatest writing is when they quote the word of God. Jesus said these words, for God so loved the world. That includes you if you're in this world. No matter how lonely you may feel. No matter how dark you may feel. No matter how guilty and worthless you may feel. That's all a part of your sin. It comes from your sinful nature. When you feel that way, lonely, dark, guilty, sad, depressed. All that comes from all of your sin and guilt. Jesus Christ is the only one who can lift you out of that. Not a puppy, not a man, not a woman, but Jesus Christ. For Jesus Christ said, for God so loved the world, that includes you. Red, yellow, black, or white, we're all precious in God's sight. That he gave his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, that is, perish in hell, but have everlasting life. Just believe in your heart in the Lord Jesus Christ. That he died on the cross for your sins. Watch this. He was virgin born. A man had nothing to do with the birth of Jesus Christ. He was born of a virgin by God. God is his father. He never committed a sin in his life, even though he was tempted at every point as we are. He never sinned in word, thought, or deed. He never lusted after a fine woman. And he had them all around him. Never stole anything from his parents or anybody else. Never lied about anything. He always told the truth. Never hated anybody. Was never prejudiced. 
or racist, never committed fornication or adultery. And then he, he, he lived a sinless, perfect, holy life. And then he voluntarily suffered, bled, and died on the cross for our sins that we have committed. And we've done it all, haven't we? No wonder Jesus was in a hurry, seems like to me. You read the Gospels all the way through. through. Uh, it wasn't Winston Her Churchill who was the first one as a young man in a hurry. It was Jesus. Because we're very nasty, all of us, very wicked. Oh, we dress up in our nice suits and white shirts and fancy clothes and dresses, and we look so wonderful. But uh, nothing but dead men's bones. Nothing but dead men's bones behind all of the facade of fine clothes and money. This is why there's so much divorce in our society. Because we're fake. And we're phony. Deep down in our hearts and on the inside. Jesus Christ voluntarily died for our ugliness. The nasty things we do in the black and dark night. Disgusting sins that he had to die for. And it, they were all laid on him. <clears throat> the Lamb of God. The uh, eternal, if you will. Sacrificial Passover Lamb of God. Not only for the Jews, but for the Gentiles as well. He suffered, he bled, and he died on the cross for our sins. As the Lamb of God. Was buried on Good Friday and rose from the dead on Good Sunday, Easter Sunday morning. He got up from the grave. There's nothing you can do with that, my dear friends, but believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. And he's living today and he's coming back uh, one day. And the only reason why he's not back right now is because he's trying to get you saved. He's waiting on you. Just like he waited on me. December the 19th, 1979 is the day I got saved. I've been preaching the gospel ever since. I've been excited about the gospel ever since. Because it, it changed my life. And then it changed my children's lives. The trajectory of all of our lives have been changed from this. Uh, that's the power of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. The power of... Of the Lord Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit of God. And God wants you. He's He wants you. Have you ever seen that sign? Uncle Sam wants you. Well, God wants you more than Uncle Sam. And he can do more with you than Uncle Sam. And he can do more for you than Uncle Sam. God wants you. He wants you to be saved. He's not trying. God is not interested in your going to hell. Not at all. He wants you to be in heaven. And and I don't know all that's going to take place in heaven, but all of the things that need to be taken care of in your life and in mine and so forth, he, he's, going to, he's, got, he's going to fix it. It's going to all be all right. But you must believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. And pray and ask him to save you. So that you can live forever with him. So pray and ask him to come into your heart today to call on his name for salvation. For the Bible says in Romans 10, 9 and 13, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou you shall be saved. Saved from what? Saved from hell. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Saved from hell. This is what, uh, this is what uh, people did not tell me when I was younger. 
uh, at the Mount Shiloh Baptist Church uh, in James City or the Pentecostal Holiness Church. There, it was about some rules and regulations that you must follow to be considered saved. And uh, I didn't understand. I, I, I didn't even know I was going, heading for hell with the evil that I was doing. I didn't know. No one told me. But I'm telling you, in case you don't know, churches, uh, getting saved is not about uh, church membership or baptism, uh, baptism, uh, you know, your baptismal certificate or singing in the choir, giving money to the church. That's not what makes you saved. What makes you saved is believing personally in the Lord Jesus Christ as your savior. And believing in him in such a way that you understand and you're willing to repent of your sins and turn from your wicked ways and follow him and obey him. So dear friend, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and thou you shall be saved. Pray and ask him to save your soul. Follow me in prayer. In the sinner's prayer, repeat after me phrase by phrase I, I will lead you in this prayer since you have never prayed it before Michael Lewis led me in prayer and I got saved that night so let's pray together believing in your heart in Jesus Christ Jesus Christ who lived a holy life born of a virgin voluntarily died for our sins took our place went through hell and to hell for us and was buried and rose on the third day by the power of God. That is the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. That is the good news. Believe it. Let's pray. Holy Father God, I pray in the holy name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I admit that I am a sinner. And that I have broken your Ten Commandments. And I understand that I deserve to die and go to hell. For Jesus Christ's sake, please have mercy and grace upon my soul. And please forgive me of all of my sins. My failures and my faults. As I now believe in your Holy Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Who suffered, bled, and died on the cross for my sins. Was buried and rose on the third day. Lord Jesus Christ, please come into my heart. And save my soul. And change my life. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and help me to repent of all of my sins and to turn from my evil ways and to follow you, Lord Jesus Christ, in the new life with your help and by your grace. And in your holy name I do pray, amen. Now, dear friend of mine, if you have believed in your heart in the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you prayed that prayer with me and you meant it from your heart, allow me to say to you congratulations on doing the most important thing in life, and that is believing in the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. For more information to help you grow in your newfound faith in Christ, please go to gospellightsociety.com and read my book titled, What to Do After You Enter Through the Door. Jesus Christ said in John 10, 9, I am the door. 
by me if any man enter in he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture that is a good thing that book that I told you about is based upon that passage from the Word of God if you believed in the Lord Jesus Christ today as your Lord and Savior please email that to us let us know uh, uh, and send the email to whatever platform you're on whatever email you see on whatever platform you're on or you can send it to DW3 that's me Daniel White the third at gospellightsociety.com and let us know we have uh, some great material free material that we want to send to you if you have a prayer request please e email that to us as well and we will pray for you until you tell us to stop now ladies and gentlemen we will resume uh, the service standing between the living and the dead service already in progress and one of the things that we do of course is read the family verses you need to switch back you say where where are the family verses the family verses are in are found in Ephesians chapter five and chapter six. Okay, that right there. is because God has led me to read them to my family each and every day for over 33 years. <clears throat> and we needed to read them. I hope that you have a family where you don't have to read them every day but i doubt it <clears throat> that's why i read it to you every day because it is amazing how that many of us forget what we ought to be doing in the family and it's amazing that how we forget the word of god and then we get off track and start doing things and creating God's family into what we want it to be and then it turns out to be a mess case in point uh, these two people are the poster children of the modern day sweet little evangelical marriage foolishness and garbage her name is Hollis uh, She's the woman who wrote 
the book Girl, Wash Your Face, which is an interesting title. But my daughter, oldest daughter, Danny, tried to tell me that she was not the real deal. And she was not, and she's, she is not, and she has destroyed herself, her family, uh, her children, her business, her career, and everything by disobeying the word of God. She's a preacher's daughter. And the poor husband had to admit, I read, I read this yesterday, he had to admit doing what I have told you men that you're doing. And that is submitting to your wife instead of your wife submitting to you. And following her dreams, which oftentimes lead to hell and hellaciousness, as it is in this case. They had it all. They had been together for 18 years. And she said to him one day, I want a divorce. You know why? Because he had submitted to her and it was all about her. And he and others put her on a pedestal. Evidently, nobody committed adultery or nothing. She just did not want to be married to him anymore. And one of the greatest guys, he's a great guy. Great catch for her. And I'll just be quite frank with you. She's not, to me, not that attractive at all. I hate to say it like that, but I, 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 just, I just believe this. I don't know what. He saw in her, but, and he just submitted to her, and it was all about her, and they did the sweet little evangelical foolishness. You know, the game that they play, ring around the rosy, oh, sweetheart, yes, honey, yes, dear bear, yes, darling, aha, uh -huh. yes, and giggling and laughing, acting stupid. Got the world talking about how hypocritical and phony, disingenuous you are. The world condemned their foolishness. The world is saying to her, in answer to one of her books, stop apologizing. Stop apologizing. It's one of her, one of her popular books. Girl, stop apologizing. You know what the world is saying about her? You need to apologize. You need to apologize, Sister Hollis. Mm -hmm. And uh, you need to take a, not just a wash your face, you need to take a bath. Because you stink. I, I have never read such harsh things from women about a woman. And then she's got this stupid video up on YouTube about how now, you know, because he, he's, he's gone on and he's got a woman who, who just came out of a divorce. She says, see, this is what happened. These people don't believe the Bible. And, they, and they're supposed to be great book writers. You have nothing to say. Sit your behinds down somewhere behind a wall and be quiet. You have nothing to say to who? what? Who? To who? In the world. See, you don't want to get, you don't want to become popular in the world on YouTube and Instagram and all of that. And then you are found out to be a hypocrite because they will show no mercy. I know that this woman is curled up in a fetal position every night based upon the things that thousands and millions of people are saying about her. How she's such a phony. How she's such a hypocrite. How she destroyed her life and her family. Over this foolishness of trying to be some kind of feminist crazy woman. And to me I see no attractiveness to this silly minded woman. Period. Anywhere. Nowhere. No, nothing. I don't see it. I don't even know how she got to where she got, got to. But now the, the white women who are condemning her are saying, lost women saying, oh, she plagiarized everything. She just took what other motivational speakers said and said it uh, herself in a different way and all of that. 
which sometimes women get away with and men don't get away. They can't get away with it. I don't care if you like it or not. She is a prime example of a silly-minded woman who has ruined by the world's estimation. That's what the world is saying about her. Uh, is this finished? Make sure that comes up before you go. I need to see it. That's what the world is saying. That she's a failure. She's a hypocrite. She's a phony. She's not genuine. She's not authentic. Okay, I see it. I see it now. And 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 he's just as guilty. He's just as silly minded. Just as silly minded. He bought into this foolishness. He bought into this hellaciousness. By being a wimp. And now he wants to tell everybody how to find yourself and how to find your purpose. Please sit down and shut up and throw the book in the trash. It's foolishness. He said this with his own. He said, I got lost in following my wife and following her dreams. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, showing, <clears throat> I thought I was showing love to her. By letting her follow her dreams and I would support her dreams. This is what so many of the sweet little evangelical Baptist charismatic men have done. They, they have basically turned themselves into women trying to please their wives. You big dummies. It's disgusting. I, 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 it's just so disgusting. Because you mess up everything. You mess up everything by doing that. 